Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another video. I'm Erin Eno, and today we're going to have fun painting this impressionistic, expressive watercolor acorn. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like. And also, if you want to see more tutorials like this one, please subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's just jump in and get painting. Today I'll be using my Bao Hong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. My sheet size is roughly uh, seven and a half by 10 and a quarter. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette. I have two jars of water because I don't know how contaminated my water might become. So I have an extra one on hand. For brushes, I just have a few on hand because I'm not sure what I'll be using. I have two in the Curry's 2500 series, one in a size 12 round and one in a size 10 round. And I have my size six round in the Curry's 2400 series. And I also have my Princeton Snap in a size 16 uh, flat shader. You will also need a pencil and an eraser because we're just gonna do a really quick sketch before we start painting. So this is gonna be impressionistic not abstract but impressionistic where uh, we want to see kind of the light and shadow created with just um, really deliberate kind of brush stroke so i've never tried that kind of style before so we'll see how it goes that's why i want to use the flat shader because i want deliberate really kind of deliberate flat kind of strokes in some areas okay so we're just going to do a quick little sketch of our acorn and i'm going to have it a little tilted so it's going to look a little curved at the top, like so. I'm just gonna mark the center point because I always have trouble making things the same on both sides. So there's just gonna be a little point at the bottom and then it's gonna come out and curve back up into that kind of rounded acorn shape. Hopefully that's pretty even on both sides, I hope. Okay, and then we're gonna do the little cap. And I'm drawing this dark enough so you guys can see it, and then I'm gonna lighten it, okay? So you have to wrap the cap down the acorn a little bit so it looks like it's kind of going around to the back like so. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so there's our acorn. We'll have the little kind of top stem part come out here. Then we're going to do just a couple of oak leaves. I'm gonna do one coming out of here. And I'm just gonna draw the main stem of it. And then we'll have one coming out of there, I think, and maybe one coming down here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna draw them out just so we can see if this is nicely balanced. So I'll just quickly draw these in. And if we don't follow them exactly when we paint, that's okay. I'm gonna fix this side. It looks a little non-symmetrical. That's better. Okay, so I lightened the lines a bit. I didn't take them away completely because this is kind of impressionistic and expressive, so I don't mind if some pencil lines show through. 
Okay, so before we start painting the actual acorn, I just want to do kind of an expressive little background. And I'm going to use my flat shader. And I'm just going to pick, um, you know, a red. I'm using Matter Lake Deep here. I don't want it really vibrant, so I'm going to water it down. Okay, and I'm just going to start going from the outside of the acorn and just do some kind of really expressive strokes. And you can kind of, I'm just going to tap my brush off my paper towel, and you can kind of do um, like dry strokes too, because they are a little expressive. And I'm kind of turning my brush so some areas get points, some areas are flat, like so. That might be a bit much. I'm just going to pick up some of it. Okay, so my brush is not soaking wet, like I say. See how you get that kind of brush, uh, dry brush stroke? That's what I want. Just some uh, white popping through so it picks up the texture of the paper. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush and I think maybe I'll throw in some little uh, olive green expressive strokes and I'm going to water that down too but then I'm going to tap it off on my paper towel so I get the kind of br dry brush stroke again and I'm going to go just just randomly put some strokes down and if you go over the leaves and over your acorn that's okay it's just very random like I say maybe we'll put in some orange that's really bright I didn't want it that bright just a little bit of orange okay again tapping it off on my paper towel and I'm just pressing down and kind of dragging it out and just these quick strokes just like so see I've gone into the acorn there and that's okay because this is just going to be like I say very random and we're going to get what we get I was going to put some blue down but I don't think I'm going to I'm then going to leave it at that then I'm going to take my size 12 brush. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep using my flat shader and I'm going to go into that Matter Lake Deep. Only I want it kind of vivid this time. And I'm going to just splatter some red on there. We can splatter some olive green and I don't know if they're big enough splatters for me I may go in and do a few more so I'm just not really caring too much if I get some on the leaves and the acorn because they're going to be covered up once we get in there and start painting and I'm thinking those splatters aren't quite big enough for me so I'm going to switch to my size 12. I'm going to go into that Matter Lake Deep there we go that's better now I'm going to go in with the olive green they're nice big ones I do want some more red in there though so maybe I'm just gonna not try the splatter maybe I'll just try tapping some in so it's a little bigger now I did end up going a little crazy on my leaves and I've kind of lost them Actually, I kind of like that effect. I'm just going to drag my brush through these splatters, a couple of them.
Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want the background getting too busy. So I've kind of lost sight of where the leaves are, so I'm just going to pencil some of them in again. Like I say, if the pencil lines don't, or sorry, if the pencil lines show through, I'm okay with that. But I just want to make them a little bit more visible. Now, I'm going to take my flat shader still, and I'm going to mix up a color for the actual acorn part. So I think I'm going to use some burnt sienna, which is a nice red brown. It's pretty orangey, so I'm going to kind of tone that down a bit with some raw umber. See where that leaves us. I was a little heavy handed on the raw umber. There we go. And I'm going to just tap the excess water off my brush and I'm just going to run my brush along the shape where that cap is and I'm going to come down the edge of the acorn then I'm just going to do the same thing just come out with these kind of dry brush strokes because we want this kind of loose expressive and we really want the brush strokes to be visible okay and I'm going to assume there's a light source hitting it on this side so I can fill that in a little more and you see I'm turning my brush now I'm going to go into some sepia which is quite dark and I'm just going to run it just underneath the cap for a bit of shadow like so come down here a little bit okay then I'm going to take off some of that excess paint and again drag these out in strokes so we're just going to kind of build it this way so you see that we're not doing bleeds we're just kind of building with actual brush strokes okay I'm going to flip my painting around so I can start coming down from this side and I'm just using the edge of my brush to establish the edge of the acorn just like that okay and then continue with these dry brush strokes you could even, to just get a little more expressive, go in with some of that orange. I don't have an orange, I'm actually using um, permanent red light, which is quite orange. And I didn't rinse my brush off completely, so this orange is kind of a muddy orange now. And we're just gonna kind of put some colors in there. This is where you just kind of get a little expressive and just start throwing in what you want. Okay, so it's still quite rough. We can put some dark sepia down this edge. And then some of that lighter mixture. So just be really kind of loose and expressive. I think I'm even gonna take some yellow ochre and that'll be kind of um, representative of our kind of light source. So I'm just going to throw some yellow in there. Okay. And I don't want a lot of bleeding, like I said, so I'm going to let that sit for a bit and then we can go throw some more tone in there. But I'm going to switch to my size 12 brush. And we're going to do a little work on some of the leaves. And we're just going to just play around and have fun. 
Okay, so I'm just mixing up my oranges and reds. Just pick whatever colors you want. I'm just going to kind of dab it in. And then do these little kind of dragging motions with my brush just to get these, you know, like I say, expressive, rough edges. I can take some of that red, put that in there. Now it is expressive, but I don't want to go over that cap. Okay, so I'm going to be careful there. We can even add some green into that. So I'm going to take some of that olive green. Maybe I'll run a stem down the middle. Go back to get some orange. Now this is getting a little muddy, so I'm just going to tap in some orange to brighten it up. Maybe some of that red. Like so. So you can see how it's kind of crazy and expressive. Now I'm going to do one that's a little more yellowy in color. And you see I've got these kind of splatters in the background. And they're going to show through in some areas, which is uh, part of the fun of this and keeping it you know loose and expressive so I'm not following that pencil line completely I'm not staying within the pencil line because it's going to be just kind of all haphazard and crazy and I'm just going to put some orange in this one and maybe some brown So I'm going to go to um, my light oxide red, which is a very reddish kind of brown. Maybe mix in some sepia in there. And I'm going to let that dry a bit and we can go in and kind of fine tune this one too. I'm going to put another little curve in that leaf there. Okay, maybe I'll throw some brown in here. Some veins. Put a vein in there. This one's still pretty wet, so I'm not going to put a lot of heavy veining in there yet. And we're going to work on this leaf here. That one is a little darker than I wanted, so maybe I'll kind of try another yellow one and stay a little lighter with the heavy colors. So my brush is a little more dry on this one. And I didn't practice this kind of style before I did this painting, so I'm just kind of playing around. Okay, so that can be our yellow leaf and maybe I'll add some of that light oxide red in there just in these quick kind of dry brush strokes like so let me add a little more yellow the brown seems to be taking over now we're going to go in and do some work on the little cap Part. and I think I'm going to use my flat shader for this and I just want a kind of light creamy kind of color not not quite so green as that raw umber so I'm going to add in some of this light red oxide 
I'll mix in some of that yellow because it's gone a little too brown and I'm going to take a light wash of that. So I'm just taking some of the pigment off my brush and going in with a dry brush. Okay, and I'm just doing those strokes again. We'll do our little cap. Okay, just like that. And then we're gonna go in and go back to the acorn. And I'm just gonna start putting in some more strokes of color. Going in with the sepia now, and you can see how you're getting, I'm getting, you are, maybe you're not painting, but I'm getting dry brush strokes, dry texture, which is what I want. Another fun thing you can do is just go in with clean water, which this isn't very clean, but it's okay. And I'm just going to come up and touch this and have it bleed out like that. Okay, it's probably a little too much water for it to bleed. So I'm going to add a little bit more paint there so it bleeds out. And then just to accentuate the shading more, I'm just going to do more sepia on this side. Maybe we'll throw in some more yellow ochre here. And kind of drag some of that darker color down to the tip. Now I want to add a little more depth to that cap. But I'm going to go in with my size 6 brush. I'm going to, and I'm going to take more of that same color that we used for the cap and I'm just going to tap some on the edge here. Okay, then I'm going to dry off my brush and I'm just going to kind of dry brush some of it out. Do the same thing over here. So I'm taking all of the water off my brush and just kind of dragging it out. So I'm just playing around. Do the tap some more tone in there. Just do another deeper line under the cap. Maybe I'll even add in some sepia there just so it's got some depth. Some at the top even on the little stem part just like that. So I don't want to fill this up with too much color and make it go really flat. Okay so I'm just tapping in a little bit of sepia here just to get some depth. So just play around until you're kind of happy with what you get. I'm kind of happy with that. I know it looks really rough, but that's kind of the look I'm going for. And I'm going to go use my size 10 brush now. And we're going to go back and just do some more of dry kind of brush strokes on all the leaves. So maybe on this guy, I will do kind of a red stem or red vein down the middle. like so. Maybe here I'll do a really dark vein down the middle. And my brush is dry. Okay, so I'm not bringing in a whole lot of paint.
You see that I haven't gone in to get more paint. I'm just dry brushing this on. Then I'm going to take some of this matter late deep. So from here on in, I'm just continuing to build up my leaves with um, layers of brush strokes until I'm happy. You see me adding the matter like deep and some green. Now keep in mind, um, this is kind of sped up, but I think you can see that every, literally every time I go to clean my brush off and get a new color to tap on there, I'm drying my brush off on my paper towel. Okay, because I'm trying to keep bleeds to a minimum and I really just want this to be um, created from layers of strokes and that's kind of the style that I was going for here. So here I'm just fixing up the shape of that leaf, adding in some, you know, dabs of brown and I'm going back to the leaf at the bottom right. That The shape of that one was a little wonky but anyway I'm just trying to fix it up here and I wanted to bring some red in so I'm tapping red around the edges and then kind of dragging it out in quick strokes with my dry brush that's key here okay you don't want a wet brush for this because that will totally change the whole look of the painting remember we want dry kind of quick deliberate brush strokes for this that's how we're building up the layers of the texture now i'm just going in with some sepia adding some veins i also add some sepia to the left side of the acorn just to give it a little more shape and I'm dabbing up that uh, vein because I felt it was a little too heavy. Now I thought the acorn was looking a little flat, so I'm just reworking the water, or the paint rather, with some plain water and tapping it up with my paper towel just to kind of bring that highlight back in. And it was pretty successful because it didn't pick up all the paint and it still left some texture from the uh, paper there. But one thing I don't like, I'm not digging this leaf down here. I think I'm going to go in with some permanent red light. Maybe add a little bit of azo yellow medium just to make it a little bit brighter. Okay, and then I'll dry my brush off again. This guy's kind of gone a little muddy too, so I'm going to scrub some of that. There we go. Just put a little life back into that guy. Go into the sap green. Not sap green, sorry, olive green. Have I been saying sap green this whole time? I apologize, apologize if I have. I'm not using sap green. I haven't touched sap green. It's just olive green. So I'm going to leave it at that. As crazy as this looks, I actually kind of like it. It's really fun to just kind of let loose and you're not trying to be, you know, not consciously trying to be loose. You're just putting paint down and seeing kind of what happens and being really kind of crazy and expressive with your brush strokes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful and this was quite a fun painting style to try so I hope you'll give it a go and if you do as always and you're on Instagram please share your work and tag me so I can have a look. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.